Hello, and welcome to Yogg's Cast. Nomadia, can you say, um, you are listening to the Yogg Pod with Zephyrus and Honeyju? Does it have to be called Yogg Pod? Yes. Hello, and welcome to the Yogg... Oh, shit. The Yogg's... The Yogg Pod? Pod Yogg, what was it? Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> You're listening to the Yog Pod. Hello's. I'm back. Hope everything is uh, good. Where, where you are. I'm fine. How was the walk in the snow? It was a bit slippery out there. It was. It was scary. Did you have any adventures? I just bought lots of stuff to drink. Water, one small bottle of Coke, <laughs> some milkshake, some Ribena. I'd kind of like to record a snowy cast. I think we should set snowcast. aside a certain... Yeah, snowcast, though, yeah. Snowscast. Snogscast. Snogscast, that would be something completely different. It's like four fucking threads on the front page of GBS about snow and of course everybody's replying oh you call that snow oh this only happens once a year where you are and where we are oh oh fuss about nothing oh, oh, ee. oh yeah. a lot of people just sort of get on with it don't they you know and you know Canada Snowy, and deal with it Finland you know snow is like part of you know their 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 way of life, but the fact is that it's in part England, of their culture. we don't actually have any proper facilities to deal with snow. You know, we don't have really any snow trucks that go out and like salt the roads and stuff. Because and keep everything going. because it snows so rarely, we don't have the infrastructure to deal with snow on a daily basis because it doesn't happen on a daily basis. No, it so of course we get one caught day out every year. And well, well, I don't know whether we get caught out as much as we know it's going to happen. We just accept that everything's just going to shut down for a whole day. <laughs> the inevitability. It's cheaper, yeah. probably, to just write off like three days a year rather than put all of those millions or tens of millions, or hundreds of millions into you know shoring up our infrastructure against snow. It's just not fucking worth it. You'd rather just, you know, say, okay, the entire workforce of England can have the fucking day off. Fuck it. I love the fact that, like, certain old people say things when it snows, that, like, yeah, global warming, (laughs) and stuff like this, when global warming doesn't actually mean hotter... Well, it does mean hotter temperatures, but it, it also means more extremities. Hotter summers, but colder winters, potentially. You don't make any sense. You're, you're illogical. You're not thinking this through, are you? No, but global warming. You just warming bought into just this this false misinformation that's being spread around, saying, "Oh, the world's in trouble. Oh, we've got to stop using CFCs." And oh, CFCs have pretty much completely stopped being used, by the way. Now, not by me. I have to order my deodorant from fucking Iraq have it shipped over here. It cost me eight pounds a bottle of deodorant just so that I can stick <laughs> two fingers up to Brussels and to Al Gore. Brussels. Fuck you, Brussels. Brussels, sorry, plural. And Al Gore's plural Brussels again. Brussels sprout. Fuck you, Brussels. Fuck you, Russell brand. Brussels brand. And fuck Brussel you, brand. Al Gore's. Brussels Gore's. Al Gore's. What's the Al actually short for, is it? Alan or Alfred? Albert. Or Albert. Albert. I think Albert. Albert Gore. Albuquerque. Bo- Gore. Bore. Alonso. He's actually Latino. Alonso Bore. He's Gore. He sounds like a racing driver. His surname isn't really Gore. It's Jimenez. What? Jimenez. 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 Marks and Jimenez. Jimenez. No, Jimenez, but it's pronounced Jimenez. Jimenez. Why are you saying it so quickly? Jimenez. You s- Everybody who speaks Spanish talks quickly because they know that other people who only have the barest grasp of Spanish won't understand what they're saying when they talk quickly. 
Yeah, but it's probably the same thing with us now. We're talking rather quickly, and we probably don't appreciate other people who don't speak English as their first. I got language. a Chinese guy here who knows. He he does. He plays well for me in like farms and stuff. Oh, I have so him like. Okay, I'll just get him. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> What's your name? Uh my name is Swang Ji. I gotta be careful actually, there's there's these people who have a Chinese restaurant just like a couple of doors up, they might hear me. <laughs> I don't think that's the most that's the biggest worry here. Bearing in mind I'm putting it on the internet. Oh shit. Swang G, can you put him back on again? Okay, I'll just go and get him. Can you hear my footsteps as I walk away? Yeah, yeah. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Um, so you're 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 Honeydew's. You work for Honeydew, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Do you? Uh, what's your? What's, what would you consider your main job? You know, to be. Uh, what, is it gold farming? Fluffing. Oh right. Okay. So you're from China originally. Have you ever? You know, does it snow in China at all? Not really. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I can't do the accent. I can't do the accent. It's terrible. I can't even do the stereotypical fucking, you know, old northern comedian Chinese accent. I can't I can't even do that. What do you mean? That was beautiful. That was perfect. Not really. I mean, how do you say, what, what the fuck? That's fine. That's fine. Uh can I have uh... Leary? Not Lily. Really? I, I, I can't do it. D Hello! Do you perhaps make food? Do you, do you make Chinese food? What kind of food? Uh, I make fish and chip. Oh. <laughs> just just the one chip? Fish and chip, yeah? Yeah? What's yeah? What's yeah? Where's yeah come know. from? That's German. Yeah? Goodness me. Well... It's been very enjoyable talking to you. Thank you very much. Uh, would you? Could you possibly say goodbye to the viewers of the Yogscast? Hello. No. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Awful. Absolutely awful. 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 I feel embarrassed. I feel ashamed. I feel dirty. listening to the Yog Pod. Do you think we could get um, Shang Shang Ji to read out some famous works of fiction? Um, only if it's got like a low reading age, because he doesn't know an awful lot of English. Or like Spot the Dog. So, no. Um, was it Green Eggs and Ham that was written using um, less than fifty words? Fifty different words of the English language. Uh, what eggs, green ham, hat, cat? Yeah, I'll just find it on Wikipedia. But I'm, I'm fairly certain he made it as like you know, like a challenge. Uh, What's use? Vocabulary of text consists of just fifty different words, of which forty-nine are monosyllabic. I can't even Mono pronounce what? that. I don't know. They've only Can got one Shane syllable. Z pronounce it. Monosyllabic. No, he can't. <laughs> <laughs> Momo Sibalic. The 50 words are A, am, and, anywhere, are, be, boat, box, car, right, cook, right, dark, do, eat, eggs, fox, goat. 50 is quite a lot good, of words. Good, green, ham, here, house, I, if, in, Stop let, it. like, may, me, mouse, not, book? on, or rain, Sam, Say, see, so, thank, that, this the, them, there, they, like, train, it's tree, like a book try, already, will, it? with, Just would, reading you. That out. <sighs> I was not, could not, in a box. I could not, would not, with a fox. I will not eat them with a mouse. I will not eat them in a house. I will not eat them here or there. I will not eat them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. Does that mean Sam I am, as in I am Sam? It's like Will I Am, the famous um, singer and artist from William. the Black Eyed Peas. He's, no, he's called Will I Am. So, in the, I mean, when he says, "I do not like them," Sam I Am is Sam I Am's the person he's talking to, 
Or yeah, is it Sam I Am. Sam I Am is called Sam I Am, much like Will I Am is called Will I Am. Do you reckon the name William originally came from people saying Will I Am? Like William yes. the Conqueror. And in the future, lots of people will be called Sam I Am. Do you reckon more people will be called like... Um, Lewis I Am. Like, yeah, like Honeydew I Am. Simon um, I Am. Will I Am I Am. Craig I Am. Dave I am. Oh man, off on a tangent here, but to to f- discover that Fallout 3 has a Republic of Dave. I was so happy with that. The Republic of Dave. Goodness. The Republic of Dave. With President Dave. That sounds incredible. It is. It absolutely is. It's the very northeast of the map, and it's just like a shitty little farm with like seven people there. And that's his Republic Don't you have to have a certain amount of people in order to have a republic? Like, a certain amount of people on the Senate or whatever? I don't know. Ask that cunt Dally Wallace about it. Who? He wrote The Yes Man, starring Will Carey. He's a British comedian. He, he, Who did he used to live with? Did you just say Will Carey? Jim Carey. Did I say Will Carey? I'm sorry. Will I Am on the brain. Will I Am Carey. Yes, man, that film that's just come out. I've seen it. It's actually, it's okay. I thought it was quite Oh, funny. is it? Is it? Yeah. I mean, Jim Carrey's already starred in a movie where he has to tell the truth for 24 hours. And now he's in a movie where he has to say yes to everything for 24 hours or whatever. What's the next fucking movie he's going to be in? You know, every time someone asks him for anal sex, he has to, like, agree with it or something. I mean, People what are saying a pile it's of shit. similar to like Liar Liar in a kind of many ways, but people are saying that that new one with Brad Pitt in it. That um... oh, let let me guess, he's got like a little son or a little daughter, and he's distanced himself. You know, his relationship isn't going so well because you know his career has come first, and so you know a magical pixie grants a wish or curses him or some shit. Oh, it's awful. Uh, no, uh, what happens is, he, like, ju- it's, yeah, basically he gets into a situation where he has to say yes to everything. Ugh. And, and he goes on a journey and he grows shit. as a person, doesn't he? He grows yeah. as a person. There are some horrible bits, there are some very cringeworthy bits, but it's actually generally okay. So the other the other film which I was talking about was The Secret... Yes. The Strange Life of Benjamin Button or something, the weird... Which oh is right, yeah. Forest Gump. This kid is born who's like old. He's all arthritic and like old and weird. And then he grows up, right? But as he grows up, he sort of becomes younger. Now, what I had a problem of was with this story is that he was born as like a little baby, but really old baby. And then he grew up, and then he shrank again, right? Now, I don't have the problem. Right. With, I don't have the problem with him getting younger. Okay, fair enough. He can get younger. But he shouldn't shrink into, like, a little kid and then shrink into a baby. So when he's born, he's a tiny old man because he's just yeah. come out of, like, a womb yeah. and a vagina. So he's small. He's a small old man. And yeah. when he's dying, he he's a baby. But he's not a big baby. He's shrunk again and he's now a little yeah. baby. Yeah, he shrinks back into a little baby. That doesn't That's make sense. Problem I have. Yeah, he should have been, like, a massive baby. Like a man-sized baby. Hmm. But that wouldn't have like been the That's same. That's quite would it? scary. That would be terrifying, wouldn't it? A man-sized yeah, th- baby. But obviously they couldn't do that in the film because that would have been absolutely terrifying. It would have kind of given the wrong message at the end of the film. It's basically Forrest Gump redone in another kind of way. Is he an idiot? Is he, you know, a fucking idiot? Yeah, he's like a struggling kid with like, you know, with like, you know, the leg braces thing and then he goes oh, to war God. and then he makes the some old war friends and they get blown up in the war, you know, and uh, exactly the same thing that happens. Oh, and his mum like tells him these things like life is what you make of it and it's just exactly chocolates. the same. Yeah. There's sort of a long love interest that he meets when he's like a kid and he kind of, you know, never really gets together with her throughout loads of things and then finally gets together with her and then she they just have to split up you know because he's getting younger and she's getting older oh god she'd basically be like a paedophile wouldn't she she was like that's doing him as like a kid is, yeah. that's a bit disturbing 
Especially the whole shrinking back down into a beautiful baby part. I mean, ridiculous. Ah. A blonde haired, blue eyed babe. Gaga, goo goo goo. Ah. I'm kind of agreeing with, like, Carl Pilkington on this, but children are not beautiful to anyone other than their direct parents, are they? And paedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, I'm not. Ch- I mean, really young. Ch- I mean, not children, like babies. There are some very faced. ugly babies. There's some very yeah. hairy babies. Was there like a Scottish woman, you know, imparting her words of wisdom there? It's from Father Ted with the milkman. The milkman's going round and getting all these women pregnant, and they're judging like a Bonnie baby competition, and all the babies have got like you know a moustache and big sideburns and stuff, because the milkman has that. Oh, I see. Oh, God. That was a good episode, I remember now. Is that the same one with the milk float? Um, yeah. It, ca- it can't go below five miles an hour or something. Yeah, speed three, it's called. <laughs> You're listening to The Yog Pod. So, where were we? We were, I mean, this was originally supposed to be about snow and stuff, because it's snowing. Hello? Hello? Snowing? Snow. We've got, we've got to talk about snow again, have we? Yeah, yeah. Is there anything you want to say particularly about snow, or Shang-Chi has to say about snow? Why, why do we make snowmen when it snows, and not snow women? Well, you'd have to put boobs on a snow woman. Well, that'd be quite easy to do. Just hang sco- on, hang you know, on, put hang a on, couple hang of on, snowballs it. on the front, on the chest. Well, maybe it's just like milkmen, postmen. Maybe it's just like that. You know, there's no, there's never been any reason. It's just a genderless expression. Sexist. No, it doesn't matter. It's not sexist. It's just one of those things which has always been. You know, like. Why is it a snow person? It should be a snow person. It shouldn't be a snow man. Yeah, but it's tradition. You don't say milk per. Well, you do say milk person, post person. I mean, in, in a milk. Ah, the post person technician. has arrived with my package. You say postie, postman, even though it's um, you know, or mailman if you're American, and sexist. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Instead of firemen, we have firefighters now. So perhaps instead of calling them snowmen, we should call them snow fighters. They're not. They're not ah. really fighting, though, are they? Ah, no. but if you gave ah, it like a sword, no, ah, if you gave it like see, a sword and a shield, ah, a gun. you do not understand, my child. <sighs> ah, you're confusing me, again. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> why do you do this? I, uh, is this it's like what Lee and Herring fighters? used to do? It's like fat men and fat fighters. I, I'm not sure about that. I, I, I think it's used in a different way. Uh, what other fighters are there? Ultimate People fighters. Fight. Ultimate fighters in cages. Yeah. Hitting each other with planks of wood with barbed wire around. Wearing like a Wearing like very small piece. shorts. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Ah. We should and do that. Sort of a weird we sh- you and I, we should do that as a Yogg's cast. God, Ultimate really? fighting Yogg's cast. What, like me and you in a cage? Wearing very in our small pants. shorts. <laughs> Grappling each You'd other, be wearing, like, wrestling wife-like. each other to the ground. Ah, oh. <laughs> that's terrifying. It would be quite scary. It'd be very scary to watch. Jesus, it'd be actually. There's um. God, it would get a lot of hits on YouTube though, just for the sheer ah novelty. Women in Love, the the film adaptation of the D. H. Lawrence novel, starring Oliver Reed and Alan Bates. And Glenda Jackson as well. Alan Bates and Oliver Reed wrestle each other. Um, it would be like <laughs> it's ridiculous. What you like the scene Absolutely in Borat ridiculous. in the hotel room? It is like that, yeah. Basically, it is. It's it's very it's homoerotic. It's one of the first mainstream movies to feature full frontal male nudity. Borat, is not high five. Not. I think it's a bit late to be doing Borat impressions. I mean, it, that a was a long bit. time ago, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I called you on making, like, Portal references, because that was, you know, like, eight months previous. 
And ball rap yeah. was fucking ages ago. Well, I mean, at this rate as well, with the rate of your cast production, this snow one will be released in, like, mid-fucking summer. <laughs> uh, and people... Yeah, it would be fine, though, for our Antipodean friends in the Australias. Our Australis mm. drongos will be listening, and they'll be going, you know, fair dues. Yeah, sipping their fosters, watching the kangaroos go by in, in box, the snow. Kangaroos box each other. That's what they oh, do. Oh, right. Kangaroo fighting. What's that, Skippy? Now, oh, Tommy's gone and fallen down a. W- <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Timmy's Awful. gone and fallen down the well. Fallen down the well? Crikey! What's that, Skip? Blimey. That crocodile's got a great bunch of teeth. Shall I play me wobbleboard? <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. Wobbleboard? I, I don't know. I'm going to creep Warfare. up behind him and stick me thumb up his ass. Yeah, is that South Park? Wow. Look at all these pop culture references flying in. Pew, 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 pew. From every direction. Jeez. Father Ted. South Park, Rolf Harris, Steve Irwin. All we all we do is just sit in and watch TV and shit. Oh man! So we we're kind of forced into talking about popular culture and film and television and so on because that's all we do. We can't well, like tell anecdotes of like conversations we've had with people because we don't have them. We don't know anybody. <laughs> we don't go. <laughs> <laughs> That's because it's snowing outside. We can't go out. We're stuck. It hasn't, it hasn't shut down. How long has it been snowing? Has it been snowing for like the last, you know, four and a half years? <laughs> <laughs> we've got nothing to talk about because it's been snowing solidly for four and a half years and we've been trapped inside our houses, surrounded by snow drifts. Our only communication with the outside world is through Yogg's cast. Can someone, mom, someone listening, mum, if you're if you're listening to this, mum, I love you. Mom, if you're listening, please send me some cocoa in the mail. The posty, the post f- f- fighter, will bring it. Post fight. <laughs> will fight their way through the the snow, and bring me hot chocolates and uh, <laughs> tins. We will of fight them in the snow. <laughs> That's me being Winston Churchill. It's another popular Is culture it, uh, reference there. Sounded a little bit like a sheep. Bah. That was a bit like Melchit. Um, <laughs> from Blackadder. From Blackadder, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a bit more like it, isn't it? We will fight them on the beaches. I don't know. He had a very sort of deep voice. I can't really do it. Sort of became a little bit of a farmer at the end there. <laughs> it did, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Arr, sorry, so bugger, we you fucking angers, you no bugger, I ain't here. <laughs> <laughs> I have an uncle, right, I have an uncle who's like, he was born in Gloucestershire, he's lived his whole life in Gloucestershire, and he's going to die in Gloucestershire. And he oh, does yeah. literally, he does literally talk, he's called Bill, actually, Bill I am. <laughs> he does, Bill he I does am. talk. <laughs> Like that, and it's, I'm sorry, nobody can understand what he says. He's 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 completely incomprehensible. It's a true sort of British farmer dialect that you know. I bet he's got sort of a ruddy, sort of shiny face. You know, quite tanned, oh. very wrinkly. Looks about seventy. He's, he's very 50. wrinkly. I think he's about eighty now, but he's always looked eighty. That's the thing. <laughs> Ever since he was born, like Benjamin Button. <laughs> yeah, except he hasn't actually gotten younger or smaller. <laughs> he's just stayed eighty. He's his very whole tall, life. actually. I think he just he's just kept growing. He hasn't stopped growing. You know, puberty hit and it didn't go away. Puberty hit. I mean, he turned eighty like years this. old when he was thirteen, and he just kept growing. He went through some spots and stuff. Went through a period of, like, you know, being rude to his parents, who were long dead. <laughs> that was just a weekend. <laughs> and then once that weekend was over, he just 
became an 80 year You're old just man. swearing at their graves. Fuck you, I'm not. Oh. Ain't no fucking rerun a boogie in your free eye. Oh man. No, but old men like that are resilient Lovely. people, mm. aren't they? <laughs> no! <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> it's like a reverse oh. paedophile. I'm not saying I love old people. Hang on, that's not what I was going to say. Old people like that are just the most, like, hardy, tough as nails people you will ever meet. You know, they've got, like, these thick old wiry muscles and they just... My dad's about 70, okay? One time I came home from work. Whoa, what? He's 70? What the fuck? Yeah, my dad's pretty old. He's about 70. Uh, yeah, he's shit? a player. My mum's quite young. Anyway, um, respect. Fair play. <laughs> your, um, your mum's 30. <laughs> I was I think this was when I was like living somewhere else and I go come home and it was sort of winter time like this you know it was cold it was miserable it was like raining down and stuff and I came home and the first thing I saw was like a ladder now you know your dad probably has everyone's dad has a ladder in the garage Right, which they yeah, a step ladder or something. Yeah, like no, like a proper ladder, like an extendable ladder, like there's yeah. two ladders stuck together. That's right. There's two ladders stuck together, and it's like it looks like the most unstable thing in the world. But when it you know when it gets put out the full length, you know you can go on top of a house. So we've got like this, just a stand <laughs> detached uh, two story house. I was actually right? given the wrong type of ladder. I fell and hurt my shoulder and hand. I called Claims Direct and I got two thousand pound. <laughs> oh God! I was actually they did, they... given the wrong type of ladder. What does that mean? I was actually given the wrong type of ladder. What a thing to say! I was actually given the wrong type of ladder. That's what he says. So my, d I came home yeah, and my sorry, dad was sorry. there on the roof, right? Which is obviously not like a flat roof. It's one of these slanty roofs, you know, with like tiles on it. And he's like. You know, throwing, like, broken tiles off the roof and, like, replacing them, you know. Really precariously. Balanced on top... I mean, he's, like, 70, right? So, hang on, so what I was just... he doing up on the roof? Was was, like... was the old world starting to get him down? Were people just too much for him to face? No. So he climbed the uh... way to the top of the stairs and all of his cares just drifted right off into space. Up on the roof. Is that how it goes? Yes. Except yeah, in tune. So. Thanks. Um, so he's on the roof, right? And I was like, hi, Dad, what's up? Why are you on the roof? He's like, oh, I'm just doing some, some tiles. And so I was like, all right. So I went in, and I was like, hi, Mum. Like, she was like, have you, you ever seen your dad ever? Crash. <laughs> <laughs> and this... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you saw him, like, flash past the window. <laughs> just the upstairs bathroom window. Oh, my God. But the the moral of the story so is So was that, he you know, alright? Yeah, it was Did he hurt fine. Did he badgy did no. he badgy did he badly injure his shoulder and hand? Quite the opposite. I think he was like, you know, better off for it, you know, afterwards. You know, he felt like he's better you know, off. What? Well, he's one of these you know, he's one of these old thing is when you're I think when you get old, it's one of these things that you don't you you kind of misjudge what you're capable of doing physically, you know? You forget that you can't climb onto the roof and just do these things or ride a motorbike or, you know, walk 10 miles or whatever. You just sort of forget. You just assume that you can do it. And a lot of the time, I think you probably can't. But there's no way you can stop people. It's like being a kid again. You have to kind of let people make their own mistakes. I'm not saying falling off the roof is probably a good one. And there's no way I could have stopped, any of us could have stopped him, like, doing the stuff he does. It's quite... You have to funny. physically hold him back from retrieving his double ladder from the shed. Oh, my God, the double ladder. <clears throat> I mean, they they are the weirdest things. Have you seen how they work? Yes, I am I'm aware of how a double ladder works, yeah. Do you reckon, like, a double ladder is one of those sort of qualifications for being an old man? The day you think, do you know what I need... I need to go and buy a double ladder. That day, you know that you're an old man. I oh, just, you know, the aerial's a bit dodgy, or the satellite dish is a bit dodgy, so I won't call anyone to do it for me. No. I'll go to I'll just go to Ikea, or yeah. DHS. DHS? What? DHS? Don't they sell sofas? 
<laughs> what do you think it is? DFS. Well, isn't that DF? That's DFS. Oh, for they sell. There's always a sale on at DFS. Yeah, there's an old joke about the unluckiest person in the world. They went to D- uh, DFS and there wasn't a sale on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What? Where will we? Can you imagine that? You look at the sofa and you look at the price tag, and at five nine nine is crossed out. And instead, it says nine nine nine, and you're like, "Oh, for fuck!" Oh, <laughs> and you fucking and the day you went as well was the day when it was snowing, and it took you ages to get there. And you were like, "Oh, so anyway, well, I'm here now. GFS. I may as well buy a fucking yeah, sofa. yeah, yeah. It will cost me thirty quid in petrol, do you know, to drive back here next week anyway, to save myself four hundred pounds. <laughs> it's just not yeah. worth it. So. So, you so put double eating. ladder. This is going to be horrible for you to um to edit because I'm eating. Actually, You're you know what I should eating. do? I should I should periodically say what time it is as well. That'll really fuck you up. Just in mid sentence, I'll say what the time is. <laughs> <laughs> so when you edit it together, <laughs> it'll just be me saying all these different times, hours apart. So you what? You're just going to say different times as well, are you? Like as well, like randomly. It's 7.44. I'll just randomly half past four, say the time. So you've gone to DFS, you've bought a lad, double ladder, strapped it to the roof of your car, you know, you drive all the way back home precariously with this thing hanging <laughs> off your car. You're probably probably featured on, like, police camera action. <laughs> <laughs> Narrated by Dermot Murdnerhood. Look or at whoever. this idiot! He's driving with a ladder strapped to his car! Swinging wildly across the road, endangering pedestrians. Look here, he dozens of people near my could have been post. killed. So you get back home, you get your double ladder out, and you like, you know, put it up against the side of your house. You're like the happiest person in the world. You're yeah. Like, oh fuck, I I have a double ladder. I've always wanted one, and now I have it. So you go up onto the roof and you fiddle with your satellite dish or whatever it is. And then you go back in, and your TV works perfectly. And you sit down, and you have a nice cup of tea and a, a shortbread, uh, shortcake, and uh, and you watch you like slip your slippers on. You watch you like watch Hartley. countdown, countdown and um, <laughs> deal or no deal. Fifteen with your cup to of one. Tea. And then you realise suddenly it hits you. You're an old man, and you've turned into your father. Yeah. And then you go up into the attic, you take out your grandfather's service revolver, <laughs> load it. <laughs> what do you mean? You take out your Hold service it. revolver from Hold like the Hold it against you your in. chin, facing up, and you blow you your mean? fucking brains out. No, you don't. You go back downstairs and you wave it at the kids outside who are like doing graffiti on your on your like front fence and then the police have the audacity to come and arrest you you who haven't committed any crime absolutely just defending your and do you know what they do do you know what they do to those kids fucking youth of today they take they take the kids right they take the kids to the police station they give them a warning it's not even on their permanent record and then they have to go on a course <sighs> so what you do is to south america you go back home. And do you know who pays for that? Do you know who pays for that? You and I. Our taxes go you do, towards yeah. that. You pay for them to go to school, to get an education. You pay for their do holidays. Do you know what we should do? We should just, like, go to the cash point, withdraw all of our money, and just, like, go to a playground and just hand out money. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Ask the kids for favours. And then we'll be arrested again. <laughs> and get arrested. <laughs> and the police have the well, audacity. You. <laughs> the you police still, you've have still the got audacity your service revolver. To arrest you for trying to solicit, solicit sexual favours from children. They have the audacity to arrest you. I mean, what kind of a world is it that we live in? A whole world's going to you know dogs. Richard Littlejohn and John Gaunt, they've got the right idea. You know, they should be... They should be elected. They should be Prime Who? Minister. Both of them should be joint Prime Minister. Richard Littlejohn well, and John Gaunt. Do you reckon conjoined twins could be Prime Minister? Or would they have to, like, just one of them? I think they would die minister. before they, you know, got to, like, any high public office. 
What do you mean? And the time that it took them to advance through the ranks of Whitehall. What are you saying? Are you saying that dead. a disabled person could never be, like, Prime Minister? Now I'm saying that co-joined twins have a low life saying? expectancy and would die probably in no, their teens. No, they teams. don't. Some of them are quite old. They're not very many of them. Like, yeah. most of them die, you know, in childbirth or in the womb. All right, all right, let's say... So, a lot um, of them don't even make it to, you know, childhood. Those that do reach childhood often have lots of complications with their internal organs because right, they're right, sharing right. Let's it. Say, let's say there's, like, a disability which isn't quite as severe, right? Like, mental retardation. And my... <laughs> Oh, look at George W. Bush. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, snap. Wow. You're listening to the Yog Pod. I mean, what is, what do you think is the most severe physical disability that someone could have and they could still become like president or prime minister of a country well think about it Blunkett is blind isn't he David he's Blunkett he's blind yeah but did he and was he born blind or did he go blind he was a cabinet go? minister he was pretty close what's he doing now um I think he got hit by a car god I'm not even sure what he is now I think he's not in the he might be still in the government. I don't know. Anyway, he's blind, so I mean that's pretty pretty good for the old blindies. Yeah. What the fuck does he do now? I think deaf would probably be okay as well. Well, it might be a bit annoying in the House of Commons. I think he's just like a backbencher now. He's he's not he's not got any position in the government at all. Didn't he used to be the treasurer, or the chancellor of the exchequer? He used to be the Home Secretary. Oh, did he? Um. Secretary of State for Education, I don't really know what any of those work things and pensions. are. Chancellor of the, all these nonsense names, yeah. The Home Secretary. Is that like national security? It's pretty much, yeah. It's um, the prison system and lots of stuff to do with uh, immigration, essentially. Oh, the police and stuff, of course. What do you think? Could we have like a one-legged Prime Minister? We probably have had... One. Actually, Gordon Brown has only got one working eye, so that's pretty good. Oh God, that's pretty good. He um he he lost his sight in one eye when he was playing rugby. When he was at uni or something. Well, that's the way you want to do it, isn't it? You don't want to like say, oh yeah, I. I Someone poked, poked his fucking in a eye Chinese out. Chinese restaurant. Gouged at his eye. It's not horrible. Yeah. Well, that's what they do, isn't it? Eye gouging, common in rugby. Pretty scary sport. Well, oh, what, and, um, do you reckon we like had like a pirate as a prime minister with one leg, like previously? Um, we had Admiral Peg Nelson, leg. who who only had like one working arm and one eye. Um, who was the really who was the cripple minister. president? I don't really want to get cripple president. He he didn't have um he he didn't allow people to take photographs of him when, you know, in his wheelchair or something. It was Franklin D. Oh, here we go. Um, polio. Um, so he was paralysed from the waist down. Oh dear. In 2003, a peer-reviewed study found it was more likely that Roosevelt's paralytic illness was actually Guillain-Barré syndrome. Oh, Guillain-Barré. That was on what the What is that? I think it's Guillain-Barré. Guillain-Barré. It's Van Nair. It's very rich. It's called GBS for short. <laughs> oh, bugger me. <laughs> no thanks. Not even if we wrestle and you accidentally slip out of your shorts. And. <laughs> I don't want to go bugger on. Me, that would be bugger me by accident, wouldn't it? Accidental buggery. It's on the increase. Well, it's it's well... particularly high risk of it occurring if you're a wrestler. <laughs> and you're aroused in the ring with all the slippery oils around. Not a sumo wrestler. I, I think I it doubt can happen it's though. I mean, if you sumo wrestlers. if you're doing something, if you're exerting yourself, sometimes you can get an erection. I don't know what it is. Do you reckon? Um, no. Yeah, it happens. I can't remember what it's called. When was the last time you exerted yourself? <laughs> 
uh, this morning, actually. Did your 10 mile run, did you? There's a name for it. Guillain Barre. The thing is, I don't want to Google it because fuck knows what I'll find. Accidental buggery. <laughs> Accidental buggery. Do you reckon, I mean, I was trying to say that among sumo wrestlers, like, do you reckon that would actually be possible? Oh, they're very large, they're aren't they? They're both so large. So you're saying that it's impossible for a sumo wrestler to to have sex, essentially? No, but with another sumo wrestler. Two sumo wrestlers? Jesus. God, that would be quite a sight. I think I would pay to see that. I'm sure there's a website you can pay to see it on. www.sumolove.com Don't type that in. It may or may not exist. If it doesn't exist, can someone please buy it? And link it to yogscast.com, thanks. God, what's the personal life of a sumo wrestler like? They're very famous. You know, they're almost revered in their country. They are gods amongst men. Because they kind of look a bit like Buddha. No, because Japan isn't a Hindu country or or a Buddhist country, is it? Traditionally, they've been a very... They worship like their house god, whatever. Yeah, their little goblin fella who looks after their house. Their ghosts. Get their ancestors. They worship their ghostly ancestors. I mean, the way I th- kind of think about it is that, you know, back in like Henry VIII sort of times, Tudor times and that, people didn't have as much food as they did these days and it wasn't as easy to get overweight. You know, today we have processed foods which are extremely nutritious and extremely, you know, nourishing and it's very, very easy to get overweight. In those days, you really had to eat a lot, and you had to live a very life of luxury in order to get overweight. So people, you know, you see these these classical images of overweight people, and they're kind of, you know, that was the beauty back then. So you're saying you find fat people attractive? They did back then, but they weren't, like, horrifically What about you, obese. personally? I Do you don't... personally find not great big heifers beautiful? <laughs> I wouldn't call them that, but I wouldn't say they were particularly attractive either. I guess sumo wrestling is the kind of Japanese equivalent of that, isn't it? So, I mean, so in, in ye olden days, when food was was rare and was it was a privilege to have, like, a, a meal, what, what the local village would do is they would pick one person, a, a big strong man, and they would give him all of their food... And then they would go to the next village and they would have the two giant men fight each other in a sand ring with a rope around it. I don't think that's too far from what may have happened, yeah. So, I mean, was this guy like the chief or like the mascot of the village or the champion of the village or he was the hero, the big strong warrior of the village? Yeah. And if anybody, you know, if any, like, raiders or, you know, vagabonds or pirates decided to attack their village, they would send out their giant man, and he would just, like, howl and gnash his teeth, and they would all just run with their tails between their legs, figuratively speaking. This doesn't actually sound all that far-fetched. I don't know whether they're necessarily, like, as fat as we would imagine. I mean, we are, like, we get a lot of images from... Like you know, what? America and the internet have like really with disgustingly flurried. fat people, with their v- and I don't think sumo wrestlers are actually that disgustingly fat. They're just they are big, hefty they, guys. They are. Well, they are. They they eat like a lot. What? What do they? Eat? Pork noodles. Maybe we can get Sang they... Shang G on the phone and tell us what he knows about them. What they do is they don't eat breakfast. So their metabolism stays slow. No, I'd like Sang Ji to tell me. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> I, he's Jap- He's he's not Japanese. He's Chinese. He doesn't know anything about oh, sumo. Oh shit! Have I just insulted his family? Yes. I'm sorry. So can you apologise for me? What they do is they they get up in the morning. They don't eat breakfast to keep their metabolism down. When they exercise. They do it on an empty stomach to to keep their metabolism down again. Every time they eat, they have a nap, so they don't burn off any of that energy. And they eat shit loads late at night before they go to bed. Actually, shit, this is what I do, pretty much. 
You've got the perfect physique of a sumo wrestler. Fuck! Then. They do say that foreigners are allowed to participate. Would you consider wrestling? I, I would like to be, like, the big show from WWE. The big show? Oh my god. I don't even know who that is. Some of your pop culture references He's are brilliant. even a little bit obscure for me. He's... He's called Paul Randall Wright. Paul Wan. Uh, Paul Randall White Jr. Maybe Shang Chi should try and say it. The Big Show. Paul Randall Light. <laughs> He's called The Big Show. He's seven feet tall, right? He's seven feet tall and he weighs four hundred and forty pounds. Now I don't know how much that is because we don't use. It's two hundred oh, kilograms. How many pounds in a stone? Thirteen pounds in a stone. Fourteen. It's fourteen pounds in stone. You sure? <laughs> Learn to Imperial. Four hundred forty one divided by fourteen. Let's see what Google says. See I can't do like basic math in my head anymore. Thirty one. He's thirty one and a half stone. He's thirty one and a half stone and he's seven feet tall. Good God. He's a monster. He is a fucking monster and he's awesome. He doesn't he's, look like he's he has my a hero. fat belly on him from pictures. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, he's quite well, you know, he's well built. He carries it well. Yeah. Um, Bearing in mind he's literally wearing, like, a Lycra One Piece. Uh, uh, and knee supports, I guess, to support the 32 uh, stone. Uh, oh, Jesus. Finishing moves. The choke slam. The Cobra Clutch oh, yeah. backbreaker segued into a Cobra Clutch. I don't know what that is. Apparently it's used as a regular move. I know the, the choke slam. That final he does. cut, That's really spinning cool. headlock, elbow drop. Uh, the right-handed knockout hook. Just ignore that. That's all nonsense. The choke John slam. John here is um, right. He puts his massive fucking hand around the guy's neck, picks them up, and then throws them to the floor. That's what a choke slam is. It is beautiful. Oh my god. What's a cobra Picking clutch? Picking someone up by their fucking neck. Can you believe... Can, I mean, Jesus. This monster of a man. Forehand chop. Signature moves. Bear I hug. Mean, headbutt. Hip attack. What's the hip attack? A really cool way to hurt someone. Also known as a butt bump, this attack is usually performed with a running start what? when wrestler jumps into the air, spins around and thrusts his pelvis backwards. <laughs> Hitting the opponent's head Accidental or chest with buggery his can often occur. <laughs> <laughs> quarter to five. It's, qu- it's quarter to five. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Why are we getting time stamps now? This is a disaster. Because it fucks up your editing. Did you not remember me saying this? So when you edit it together, it's going to consist of me just saying the time an awful lot. And instead of, like, a simple ten-minute conversation, it'll it'll be revealed to be, like, a four-hour conversation that's been edited down to appear as though it only lasted ten minutes. My God. A choke slam. I would do a choke slam on you if we wrestled. I would so fucking do that to you. Why are you so excited to like wrestle with me? You would, you would be fucked. I'd just grab I'd you by a, the um, fucking neck. I hurt do a my tombstone arm. on you. Oh wow! I'm not. Oh shit! What is a tombstone? That's like a kind know. of um clothesline. Undertaker is the only like wrestler that I know. Oh, I it's a pile driver. Kind of like a yeah, yeah, a pile driver. What the hell? It's the throw <laughs> where you, like, go-go mash their platter. head into the floor or something. Yeah. What's a go-go platter? The Maddie's chatting with me. We're talking to each other. Shall I ask her what she's wearing? Yeah. She's she's probably wearing that blue hoodie from that photo. Ah. Uh... In the snow. <laughs> and she's wearing Stop a pair yourself. of sumo wrestler pants. <laughs> Put your hands back on your keyboard. She's wearing Ugg boots. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why aren't you talking on vent, you fucking idiot? Because we can't just have random people, like, talking in the old It's ten to five. Confuse the listener. <laughs> it's eleven to five. It's ten to five. 
and you're listening to the Yogscast Snowed In Special with Zephos and Honeydew. Ding! This is dedicated to Shika, by the way. This show is dedicated to Shika. I love her. Oh god, I love her! Tune in for part two of the Oxcast next week.